So, participants today we will be discussing a new topic and that is on precision farming and protected cultivations and simulations application in agriculture for natural resource management. Earlier we discussed about various way of natural resource management and also that different kind of applications of modeling and simulation exercise for resource management and also how that particular you know tool of modeling can be utilized especially in the field of agriculture where the uses of natural resource management are quite significantly important for you know our community's livelihood. Now, if you look at a precision farming, precision farming as all of you might be knowing that it basically tries to you know do the farming in a very efficient manner, right amount of activity, right amount of you know input at the right place at the right time. That is the very simple fundamental background of precision farming. We try to make the farming system efficient and precise, so that the utilization of any input or natural resources would be such that with minimum you know inputs or minimum utilization of natural resources, you can maximize your output that is yield or any, any other you know targeted outcome. So, the purpose of uh, precision farming are uh, different as you see in this particular slide. One of the major objective is high income generation because enhancing farmers income is one of the most important objective of precision farming. But on the other side it also tries as I said that while increasing the income it also tries to restore or to create the minimum damage to the environment or natural resources. Precision farming also talks about efficient management of pest, diseases, weed control. It also tries to you know address the issue with efficient water and nutrient management. It also helps in reducing uses of pesticides and insecticides. It allows the uses of automation to reduce the human effort in some cases, not to stop or discourage the human power, manpower into the system, but just to reduce the pain or the drudgery of human effort into agriculture. Obsidian cultivation can also be facilitated through this kind of precision farming or you know protected cultivation also. I will talk about this in greater detail in the following slides. Higher yield of course is always the target for any activity, any intervention that you try to take in the field of agriculture. The fundamental target, basic target is to increase the yield. Better quality of course, quality cannot be compromised. So, these are the you know overall purposes of precision farming and also protected cultivation. I will now discuss uh, these things in greater detail. Most of you or probably all of you have heard about this term precision farming technologies. Now, many things actually can come under precision farming technologies. In this slide you see many examples, polyhouse, shed net house, plastic mulching, hydroponics, UAV application, raised bed and many other micro irrigation, farm pond, then aquaponics, remote sensing. All right. So, these are the various uh, technologies, some, some examples of technologies which we can call as precision farming technologies. Each one of them has you know very different uses and can be utilized in particular condition. Use of UAV applications though very popular in the developed country where you have continuously you know hundreds of acres of land. But in our condition in developing countries like India, Nepal, Bangladesh where the size of the land is very small, sometimes you know you will find very very difficult to apply such kind of technologies. Because UAV applications if you have a 
large land you know with similar kind of crop then the applications of a particular uh, fertilizers or particular pesticides or any other you know applications will be much easier utilizing this kind of technology otherwise it may not be as beneficial as it look like hydroponics has become very popular in many many parts of the world and so in our country hydroponics being used largely now in various you know horticulture purposes to make you know fruits or vegetables also um, there are couple of organizations uh, who are actively working on hydroponics though hydroponics is yet to become a kind of a farming practices which is very commonly seen in across the country in any part of our country that will take some time but things are moving in that direction plastic mulching also you might have seen in very places yes again this kind of you know activity as it requires little bit of investment you may not find uh, very often you know in normal agricultural field run by our um, resource poor farmers shed net house poly house these are again very popular among you know contract farming or farming for uh, some in business purposes right so but these technologies have already arrived that's the good news in india and people can actually take the benefit of these technologies but to make it easily available and to make it little bit low cost so that it is being used by you know our farmers the large number of farmers who are doing farming are actually resource pure poor in our country so the benefit of these uh, you know precision technologies by those farmers still remain a challenge now greenhouse and uh, polyhouse whatever we you call it you know this is being used uh, for uh, decades or more largely in the research purposes or as i said that uh, by certain organizations uh, who are private organizations who are into some uh, agricultural or horticultural farming so these are commonly used uh, you know precision farming structures under protected cultivation that we call as protected cultivation generally you know you made of uv stabilized polyethylene film it can also be made with uh, sometime glass polycarbonate or acrylic uh, sheet these are largely subject to mainly you know uh, live load dead load and most dominant is the wind uh, load that uh, are actually you know given to this kind of structures greenhouse also creates as you we know that microclimates and uh, largely due to the entrapment of incoming solar radiations and difference in in relative humidity wind speed carbon dioxide concentration uh, between the poly house and the ambient air now you know single uh, span or multi span greenhouses are also available these days and uh, they are quite efficient in many aspect uh, structures are also made of gi pipes low costs uh, are also made with bamboo and uh, you know wood in our case here in assam in many places uh, people use bamboos most of the time and this not only reduces the cost but also it is uh, sustainable in many ways so yes poly house greenhouse is a technique under you know precision farming and especially under protected cultivation but till today this technology uh, requires little bit of you know investment so our poor farmers in indian agriculture system you know are yet to get the benefit of this technology and i hope that in future uh, the price or the investment required for such kind of technology will go down with advancement of further you know technology development now commercially used multi span uh, you know poly house you will find largely in case of you know private farmers contract farmers contractual farming system and but they are to be honest uh, popular in developed country but still not much in our country multi span type of greenhouse yeah, i think that 
it would require really some more time before you can see that every Indian village is somewhere these kind of structures are there. Because mainly the investment, the high investment that is required for such kind of structure, arch or tooth type of you know poly houses are also popular, gutter ventilations, wide span type, poly tunnel type, then saw tooth uh, ventilations. These are the technologies per se is uh, being developed in a very faster rate. Lot of R&D research work is also taking place in the field of precision farming and especially looking at the agriculture sector. So, technologies are available, but to make it you know available to the resource poor farmers remains a challenge and still people are working to solve that problem or that puzzle as well. Now, the structural components of greenhouses that mm, just now have mentioned, if you see that there are uh, some basic you know engineering aspect of these greenhouses which uh, one needs to look at. So, I will not uh, spend much time on this particular aspect. So, you see that uh, most of the uh, structures are actually having you know quite uh, you know, well measured and well thought uh, structural engineering in every cases it has been made in such a way that utilization of solar uh, light or sunlight can be utilized in appropriate manner. So, in some cases you will find that concretes uh, have been uses uh, for footing purposes, but in some cases to reduce the cost uh, one can use also you know non concrete uh, uh, kind of footing. As I said bamboos can also be used as uh, pillars for this kind of structures if you want to reduce uh, the cost or investment involved with this kind of structures. Effect of uh, wind on such greenhouse gases is another very critical aspect which we need to um, keep in mind because there is often a chance of uplifting or overturning or you know sliding of this kind of structure because of strong wind blowing from one side to the other. So, results of this kind of you know strong wind on this kind of protected cultivation structures is one challenge uh, which engineers uh, is trying to find out the answers. Solution is there uh, with you know different kind of adjustment uh, you can actually handle this particular problem with wind. This problem of uh, uh, wind also depends uh, on latitude where you are located. You know, in the northern latitude and east west uh, orientation of your greenhouse is favored to avoid uh, the shedding effect from one greenhouse to another greenhouse. But at the same time, as I said, that the direction of the wind and uh, the structure of your uh, greenhouse is actually should be made in such a way that you can avoid the direct thrust of wind on your greenhouse structure. So, these all those things are actually to be honest a lot of R and D work has already been carried out across the world and precision agriculture is actually in now quite developed time and again I am telling that in our kind of situation in developing country. the benefit of this technology is yet to be achieved. The basic reason is that that we our farmers are not in a position to have this kind of investment that is needed. So, we need to find a different kind of solution to bring these technologies for you know enhancing the income of our farmers. We saw that how wind actually can affect the greenhouse uh, you know structures and uh, there could be different kind of effect for you know gusty wind. Now, look at that how you know greenhouse structural design and also the associated you know various calculation with regard to the material can be carried out for you know preparing greenhouse gases under precision agriculture. Now, to start with uh, there are two important aspect uh, or uh, parameters that are associated with the greenhouse gas structural design. Those are inputs and what are the corresponding outputs. Now, if you look at the flow diagram of greenhouse structural design, 
from the start we first need inputs. Now as inputs what are the different parameters that one has to look for? It is wind speed, area of greenhouse, distance between side columns, span width, number of spans, height of the greenhouse and gutter height. So these are various inputs that you require for structural design of greenhouse gases. So once uh, you know the information about these inputs you have with you, then you go for you know the smallest available pipe section data that are required for this kind of structural design. Now once you got that, then you go for load calculations with all the possible wind conditions and the two load combinations. So again look at this uh, previous slide that uh, we discussed with. So there is a chance of you know this kind of uplift overturning and sway or sliding because of strong wind. Now once this uh, load calculation is also carried out then you go for checking for the stress and buckling and deflections that may arise. So you need to check that while doing so if you find uh, you know that the checking is, is not satisfactory then you go for next higher section and then again you continue this process from pipe section data stage and come back here and once you are satisfied then you go for the next step which is your final output. So once what kind of output actually you can get from this kind of structural design here are the list of potential output. So the material that actually you need or require like you know polyethylene which are uh, most commonly uh, used for greenhouse structure and then pipe you often use GI pipe in some places where you know you want to go for little bit you know cost effective or low cost technology as I said earlier that bamboo can also be used effectively and then your pipe dimension can also be analyzed or calculated through this particular exercise. So greenhouse gas structural design this actually then allows you to calculate not only the design but also the material which you need for you know erecting this kind of structure. Now if you again look back this uh, particular slides where you know strong wind can actually you know topple your uh, structure greenhouse structure. So if you go for you know certain kind of you know metallic frame then you need to also look at that uh, the cost aspect of those metallic frame. Remember in our condition in Indian condition majority of the of the farmers on the ground will not be able to actually carry this cost. If you suppose propose this kind of structure to them and if they find that th there is significant amount of cost involved they would hardly actually go for greenhouse gases technology and to be the part of the precision agriculture. So that is why till now most of these kind of structures are limited with contract farming of farmers which have a uh, significant amount of you know capacity to invest for this kind of structure. Now a typically you know a greenhouse gas structure as you see that the flow of uh, air or the uh, ventilation is a very important aspect for plants to grow in a appropriate manner. So the side ventilation and also top ventilations these all need to be ensured in an appropriate manner. Now let us uh, you know look at this uh, typical greenhouse uh, structure. Now here we could have you know temperature control inside the structure. You can have you know fan to regulate the air inside the structure. So solar radiations will come in and of course it will increase the temperature inside the greenhouse gases as we know. Then you can have also uh, foggers these days inside very advanced uh, greenhouse gas structure to maintain the humidity required humidity inside the greenhouse. Now plants which are growing here inside the greenhouse uh, structure it is very very important that proper air circulation or ventilation humidity you know should be maintained. So 
on the basis of that you can calculate a rest of the requirement for a appropriate management of uh, this kind of structure. So, what are the different uh, you know information or aspect that we need to keep in mind once we you know actually build the greenhouse structure and then going to grow the plants inside that. The microclimatic uh, modeling using heat and mass transfer equation CFD simulations often help us to understand or optimize the inside the greenhouse gas you know environmental conditions. Structural analysis design optimization of greenhouse is again an important parameter because this kind of investment you are not going to make for you know few months or few days but few years maybe a decade or so. So, it requires a significant amount of management proper management uh, monitoring. So, that means you need skill manpower. So, a greenhouse gas structure not only allows you to produce you know quality product, but also can generate you know employment. So, skill manpower would be required to run this kind of system. Now, control of microclimate as you see here temperature, fog, humidity, control of microclimate inside the greenhouse can be carried out either manually or automatically using you know various microcontrollers uh, these days we have also IOT. So, this is how basically this kind of structure can be managed by one or two person if they are well trained. So, this basically you know meant for as I said that for farmers which who has the money or resources to invest in our condition. There are other various types of you know uh, protected cultivation structures. You will see these are the pictures actually in which are in and around various parts of our country. That means, these technologies are available at present. Net house now very common one. Then you can have you know shade net house which uh, many people can actually utilize and in fact, our farmers resource poor farmers also can have this kind of uh, shade net house low tunnel you know sometime it is uh, very effective to grow certain kind of plants. For private uh, you know horticultural businesses uh, you will find that they like this kind of MS uh, uh, mild steel structures which are easy to maintain as well. Now, these all structures uh, you know in these particular slides are available here in India. Walk-in tunnel largely used for you know R and D purposes research and development purposes by researchers to carry out certain experiment. And uh, then we can have bamboo or wooden based uh, you know uh, greenhouse uh, kind of structure or net house structure as I was telling that for Indian condition you know this kind of system would be much more uh, what you call useful. Because we cannot propose some techniques or technology which are very costly in nature in uh, you know Indian condition in the Indian different uh, areas where most of the farmers are resource poor. So, challenge is to have almost similar kind of effect, but with much less cost. Cement and concrete uh, pillars also you know in some cases you might see where the people want to go for rather a permanent kind of you know net house or greenhouse you know, gas structure. Stone pillar structures are also uh, visible in uh, many places. Overall you know the functionality of all those structures that are visible in these particular slides are you know relatively with uh, low cost technologies and that is why I said that most of them are visible or available in our Indian condition. Now, few more you know technologies that which actually slowly slowly in Indian conditions we are trying to bring in from advanced countries. Commercially as I said that mostly you know polyethylene is used as you see that this kind of poly houses huge poly houses where you can have thousands and millions of uh, small small saplings and basically you can you know have a very thriving business of horticulture or fruits vegetables also you can you know produce in this kind of structures. Now, this is again it requires certain amount of investment 
and also lot of uh, different technologies and skill manpower are required for maintaining uh, this kind of structure. So, as you see that uh, this kind of structures once it is developed certainly it will continue to give you know the profit or the benefit of developing this kind of structure for a long time to come. The key is that availability of skill manpower, maintenance and maintaining or optimizing the environment inside this kind of structure. So, that is often a challenge that is found mostly in case of our condition. Now, agro shedding application for different kind of purposes people also go for different kind of shedding because some plants which when it is at the in a growing stage at the very preliminary stage they cannot actually withstand very strong sunlight. Commercial you know horticulture business commercial nurseries you will find that lot of uses of this kind of structure with a net or plastics often are used for this kind of shedding structure. Now, there are couple of uh, aspect in these things. Now, all plants do not require similar kind of shedding. So, there are certain plants which you know require you know 35 percent or 50 percent, some plants require 70 percent shade and some plants may need 90 percent shedding. So, this kind of adjustment need to be done, your structure should be made in such a way that you can actually open and close the roof shedding facility. Now, let us look at about this shedding material a bit what kind of uh, different aspects are involved with this kind of shedding material. Now, one is uh, black and black kind of material which actually definitely absorbs lot of radiating heats inside the you know inside the shade house and the sunlight coming in you know it cannot go out and fully will be absorbed you know by the uh, roofing material that is if it is black then it will definitely increase the inside temperature. This kind of material are used mainly in all type of nursery. You can have also white and black kind of material roofing material which diffuses lights inside the shade net house and uh, these are used mainly for growing flowers like anthurium, garbera. So, here the inside the uh, structure the temperature will not be going as high as this uh, black and black structure. Green and black structures also available and visible in our Indian condition is largely cut off the unwanted UV rays used largely you know for grape shedding because you know that uh, grape is a very very sensitive uh, fruits and a large industry which are directly linked with livelihood of many people and uh, quality is important in this particular business and grape is perishable very quickly perishable. So, you know the quality of grape uh, its storage these are various issues. So, in case of uh, this kind of uh, particular plants what you have to do to go for green and black structure which also gives different kind of look. Now, green and green as you see here green and green structures it enhances the photosynthesis of the plant and these are used mainly for better you know, foliage for ornamental plants which are in high demand in various you know metro cities and business houses. So, depending on purposes your shedding app you know application need to be decided what kind of plants, what are the nature of you know their you know growth stages these things need to be kept in mind before you decide what kind of material or what type of agro shedding that you will be using. Mm -hmm.